here at Catan Rise of the Incas, which is a standalone Catan game set way in the past. And I think possibly one of the best bits about this game is it is Catan with llamas. And as you can see, Abby's made a new friend over in the corner. So yeah. we're here with Ron and Kelly from Catan. Hi, how's it going out there? So we're super excited. First of all, we're going to give you guys a look at this box. So let's whoop. Let's let's bring this into you all. So what I really like about this is it still has a lot of the style and the flavour of traditional Catan, but you've got your Incas there. And if you even look closely, you can see llamas and alpacas on the front of the box. And if we take a look on the back, it gives us a little rundown of what it is. Uh, so age is 12 plus, takes about an hour and a half, and it's three to four players, which is amazing because we're in luck because there are four of us here today. Uh, you guys at home, I love you so much. It's unreal. Uh, we have got some amazing suggestions of names for this llama here. Uh, so we've got actual Ethan saying the Dalai Lama. Uh, board game photo suggesting Lamar. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lightning Juice says Lama Stay. Uh, Black oh Chad goodness. 33 is switching it up with Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Or Lawrence. I quite like Lawrence. Lawrence the llama. Yeah. Is it a llama? Or? It's got a kind of a flow to it. Llama yeah. stay we're liking. Uh, we've also got Jim. Um, we've got Phil. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, every, and then everyone is saying, llamas are so cute. This llama is so cute. This game is great. Oh, my God. It's Katan Rise of the Incas. Um, oh, and LK, LXKHN123 says... Lawrence of Catan. Oh. So, I quite like some of these suggestions, so please keep sending them in. They are golden. Uh, anyway, sorry, enough about the... Is it a llama or an alpaca? It's an alpaca. You can tell. Llamas have long face. Alpacas have smush face. I have a different way of remembering yeah. it. Uh, alpacas have uh, pointy ears, uh -huh. and llamas have, like, banana-shaped ears. So I say banana llama, and uh -huh. it reminds me that whether it's a... A uh, llama or an alpaca. But I can't see said... So he could be anything we wanted to be. Ears. <laughs> so, apart from having llamas, uh, Catan Rise of the Incas is a lot like the Catan that you know and love, but as you can see, a few things about it have changed. It's not quite, not quite the same. So I'm going to bring you guys in, and we are going to have a look at some of the things that we have got here. So, Ron, run us through. What are we looking at right now? So this is an area in coastal South America. Well, not South America yet. Early Inca period. And so we have the coast. We have the mountainous jungles. And we're building early civilizations along here. So just like Catan, you have hexes with resources, uh, ones you're familiar with, like lumber or wood uh, or from the mountains. We've got some new stuff. Uh, instead of wheat, we have potatoes uh, from these fields, and uh, then, of course, alpaca and llama instead of sheep. Uh, there's three new resources in the game. They're more of a commodity. Uh, you can trade them at a slightly different ratio than the normal five resources of Catan. We have fish from the coasts, and in the jungles, we have ornamental feathers and coca. Awesome. And one thing that we don't have in regular Catan that we do have here are lots of little things that have been modeled out of plastic and these are awesome. Yeah, so we have your road, everybody's pretty familiar with those. We have uh, your settlements and we have your cities. Then we also have a cool sculpted little robber, a trio here, a couple of dudes and a llama. Now, those are super, super cute. And we've also got, a, like, a little green crown. Ah, uh, yes. This is sort of the core of one of the big differences in Rise of the Incas over any other Catan. Um, regular Catan, you're expanding your empire, your, your community, trying to grow it into you get 10 points. Here, you're still doing uh, the 10 points, but um, there is a rise and fall, an ebb and flow to your civilizations. So you're going to bring three eras of your peoples through their early tribes, their mid-tribes, and their late tribal period. At the end of each period, you put your folk into decline. So you cover up your buildings with these vines, and you take away all their roads. 
those old civilizations will still produce goods for you, you still get resources, but they can be overtaken by other people's stuff. So you can build a road in, crush down your stuff and build my stuff. Oh, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that, Ron. Yeah. Oh, well, let's yeah, have a look. Glasses, you know? <laughs> Nothing is forever. I mean, it's, exactly. it's often been said. So let's give the guys at home a little look because at these. So these little player bots here are different from the normal Catan. So what are they and what do they do? This is your sort of culture table. Um, it keeps track of how evolved or how advanced uh, each of your cultures are. So as you build your first tribe, that's the, what you start on, once you build another building and then a third building or four victory points worth of stuff on the table, they go into decline cover up what you have with vines, take away all their roads, and then you start a new civilization somewhere where you can place a piece. So maybe I put it here. Um, then I would mark, they are the founding civilization, or founding tribe of my second era. Ah, awesome. Now somebody in the chat has asked, do the llamas rob you? Kelly, what, do, do the, are the llamas thieves? No, the alpacas are resources. Oh, okay. So there's a whole bunch of new resources in this game. Uh, we still have ore and bricks and wood, but we also have <gasps> alpaca. So are we going to have to get a close-up of these? And instead of wheat, there are potatoes. Oh, and the potatoes are flowering. We like to say it's the first gluten-free Catan. Well, uh, th th we heard it here first. That's a little inside, inside secret. Are any other go are, are any other games gluten free? Not throw throw burrito because that will have a that will have a, a gluten wrap, won't it? Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, yeah, you can get gluten free wraps, but you know it's all a mystery. Are there wrap artists that do gluten free wraps? I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> a gluten free wrap wrap artist. Ah, okay. So we do have the llama in here, but you know robbers have to carry stuff, and llamas being pack animals, I guess they're robbing lots of stuff and carrying it away. So. Ah, okay. Well, if you guys at home do have any questions about Catan Rise of the Incas, pop them in the chat and we will relay them. Otherwise, I'm really hyped. I want to use llamas to help build stuff, basically. So I think that we should give it a little go. Sounds good. So I am going to pick the red color. Uh, again, I just got to look at these molded and uh, sculpted cities. Because usually in Catan, you just get um, wooden cities. But these ones have been sculpted. And they're really, really cool. And if you're into painting, you can paint them up. You can make them look really, really special. Okay, so we've got a little starting set up here on the board. So for people at home that don't know a few things about Catan, um, the basic premise is that we, beginning of every turn, we roll some dice, and then the number that we get on the dice, we find on the board. And if you have a city or settlement next to a hex on the board, you get a resource from that hex. So for instance, here, Red is next to a six. And so if a six was rolled, they would get a potato. And that's generally how Catan works. And with the resources, you have in front of you a little board right here that tells you what you can build and all the different things you can do to trade. And the aim of the game is to score points, as all good games are, and you score points by usually building cities and settlements but, Ron, are there any other ways you can score points in this game? Uh, no. Actually, strangely, we do have a long road, large army equivalent in this. But instead of giving you a victory point, those give you a special extra power that you can use one time per turn while you control that card. So you're not going to get points through those. Uh, you can get some points in the dev card deck, just like uh, in the regular Catan. But... Uh, the long road large army points are, are not a thing, but the powers they give you are actually pretty strong and help you get points easier. Ah, and Kelly, you were telling me yesterday that the development cards in regular Catan are super, super powerful and something that people often overlook. Mm -hmm. um, are, the, are these cards in here, are they, are they similarly powerful? What kind of things can we expect to be able to do? They are, they, and they're actually really interesting because there's two parts to the deck. Uh, there's ones and then there are ones oh, look at and that. twos and so they all have um they're very similar uh combat arts you are like a knight equivalent 
Uh, there are some um, resources. This invention says progress, invention, take any two resources from the supplies, so kind of like a year of plenty. Um, it's, they're very similar. Um, you get to the second deck once everyone has built up through their second tribe. You take these first techs out, and then you play with the second cards. Oh, awesome. So it is, it, they're different. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a different feel to them. Oh, I'm excited for that. So people in the chat are, ex are really excited. Uh, so Lynx123 says, Getting robbed by a llama sounds about right. It's so fluffy. And no root says it's too cute. Lightning Juice says, Catan for celiacs. Um, yes. <laughs> Lynx says, I want to see how the game flows. I'm super interested. And Super Shrine and Dude says, I love the tribal progression in this game. Well, yes. I think we should give it a go, Let's you know. So, we're going to get a seven. I'm going to roll, and whoever gets the highest gets to go first. So, I get uh, a five. So, it's defo, not me. Hello. Abby's up. Oh, and Abby's gotten a five. Okay. All right, Kelly. Come on, Kelly. Ten. 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 Boom. All right. So, we've already placed our pieces. This is the starting setup that comes defined in the, in the book, but um, obviously, if you were more advanced, or you want a different setup, this can be variable and you can do the, the snake setup as I would build and then everyone else would build and then it would go back counterclockwise. That can be done, but we're just gonna do it this way. Oh, awesome. Right. So All just right. to run through everyone's colors. So Kelly is blue. is blue. Ron? I am the boring stone gray. Why does it boring? It's classic, isn't it? It's, it's timeless. I'm, I'm terracotta orange and Abby is mustard yellow. Uh, okay, Kelly, roll the dice and let's see what happens. Six. Okay, so we find sixes on the board and see who is next to them. Uh, so terracotta, that's me. So I get a potato, and, and then Kelly and I each get a wood. So a wood each a for you. Now, just like in normal Catan, the red numbers on these little discs indicate the numbers that are most frequently rolled, and actually you can see by the dots as well. So you can see that ten here has three dots, whereas two has just one dot because you can only roll a two with two dice by rolling a one and a one and i have a brick and wood if you could put that in there i can me. indeed so i am going to build a road oh so you're going to build a road it looks mm -hmm. like okay so in Catan, you want to build roads there. around the board so you can build cities and settlements yep. citizens and settlements have to be at least two spaces yep. basically away from another okay. one We've got eight. an eight. So eight. Abby gets an or. Or for Abby. Uh, I get brick. Oh. I get a brick. Oh, you get brick. A huh? brick and a brick. So used to being red. And there yeah. is another eight up here, but nobody is next to it. Uh, does anybody yep. have a brick available? Maybe. For the right price. Uh, I've got some ore. Um. Or and a cocoa? Oh, I'll give you a brick. I'm going to jump in there. Uh, well, no, hang on, hang on. An ore and a cocoa sounds great. Yeah, I'm good. Will I'm good you for that. For just an ore? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, you friends. undercut me? Yeah, it's the name of the game. Oh. Right. It's the name of the game. <laughs> so many ABBA references. I'm going to build two roads. Two roads? Well, you know, you gave me a brick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I should go. Da -da. Yeah, I think I'm getting in here. Ooh. Ah, interesting. So now, because Ron has built two roads, and he will be two spaces away from other cities. He can work to build a city or a settlement in this little space here, which gets him victory points, which allow him to win the game. So something I have noticed is that there are no ports in this version. Yes, so instead of ports for trading, what we have are trade goods. And the trade goods work like resources. They're on the board, the feathers and the coca and the fish. And when you roll them, you can get them. But then on your build cost card, there are trading ratios that allow you to trade those goods for the resources that you might need. So instead of, um, you can trade three for one of your resource, like three potatoes and get an alpaca, or you can trade two feathers for one other resource or two coca. Or if you get one of each, you can get two resources of your choice. And so building on those, along these edges it's almost like being on a port um it's it allows better trading exactly. it cool 
access to other little sweeteners. Like, yeah. Mm. I was going to offer you that coca just to get <laughs> <laughs> But no. Oh. I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> okay, right. It's yeah. my roll. So I'm going to roll these dice and see what we get. Ooh, it's 11. an 11, which Ooh, is I quite an uncommon roll. So, uh, so for Abby, because she is the okay. mustard color. Yep. And then, or for me. Oh, I will take that. Here we go. And now I have the opportunity to build things. Now. I'll hold your mic so you can. Maha. Oh, thank you. It's quite hard to do one-handed. Um, I don't actually have any wood. So does anybody have any wood so they'd be willing to trade with me? What are you offering? Uh, what do you want? I've got, I've got ore. Um, I'll take it for... An ore or? and a llama. No, I'll take it for a llama and a potato. I, I don't have a llama. Um, I don't have a potato. No. Oh, rude. <laughs> Sorry, well, got to okay, do better then. than that. Anybody else? Any wood? Wood? Ah. Oh. Spend it all on roads. None for me. None for Gretchen Marinas. Okay, <laughs> cool. End of my go. And then it goes on to Abby. So Abby, roll all these right, dice. So roll them dice. Oh, yeah, so it's a four. A four. So oh, I get something. Great. So I get... Is this... That's a four as well. That's brick. Fabulous. So I get some brick. You get a brick as well? Oh, uh, here there we go. There we go. Another one over here. Oh, so who's red? That's oh, you I got, got a llama. llama. Finally. Finally. We have a four right. here, but I don't have a settle oh. Ah, okay. All right, cool. Um, So let's see. Um, I am looking for... Has anyone got any wood that they would like to trade me for? A I mean, we've cocoa? just been through this. Nobody, no, nobody has wood? No, I asked for it and no one had yeah, any. Yeah, but maybe no one just wanted to trade wood with you. What? Oh. <laughs> maybe oh. they might want to. I don't know. Okay, okay. Okay, well, I don't fine. have any wood for um, you, I'm afraid. Well, in that case, I'll just build just one road then. Okay, just right. one road. Uh, so I trade in my, my wood and my brick. Do you have a yama available for a cocoa? Uh... Oh, are you allowed to initiate trade when it's not your turn? I can ask you as the <laughs> dice holder if you would like to trade. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. No, 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 it's true. I can't trade um, with them, but I can offer. Oh, okay, so what yeah. were you offering me? Hang I'm on, offering a thing. cocoa for a llama. I, I know you have a cocoa, so with this I cocoa, yeah. you could turn it into anything you want. Maybe that extra... But I don't have a llama. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> I would have loved to, but I can't. Oh, so that's Abby done. Right, I will roll. Okay, so Kelly has rolled eight. an eight. Oh, so we have lots of eights on the board. They are one of the red ones. Uh, so there's one here, which means that Abby gets an ore. We have one here, which means that me and Ron get some bricks. Uh, and I that, got that's nothing. definitely not a brick. Back in there you go. Uh, so one for me, one for you. Danke schön. And there's one right over here, but no one's next to here yet. There. No one's next to here. So what do these symbols mean around here? For the eight, and then just north of it is the, or actually south of it, is the uh, coca. And out here is fish, fish. So these indicate the other odd resources, trade the goods, trade goods. Uh, that you use in this game. Yeah, trade goods, you can turn them into real goods. Mmm. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Well... There we go. Kelly, what are you going to do? Um, I, n I need wood. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people need wood. Is, yeah, is, is there any no way that you can it. get wood if there's no wood and nobody has yes, any? Yes, and that would be if anyone had a feather. Okay. I have, or I would trade for a feather. No feathers. Uh, any feathers? I've got a fish. Okay, though, that doesn't it's, not, it's definitely not a feather. Okay. If I could get two feathers, I could turn them into wood. And okay. And I would be able to use it that way. This, with your good and my coca and a feather. No, you need a feather still. Yeah. Never mind. No, you it's have a feather. I have one. So if you get a coca and a fish, you can trade all three of those for two cards. Right, but then I don't have my other two resources I anymore. Know, that's fair. All right. <laughs> Next turn. Next turn. Okay, Ron. What's it going to be? Two. A two. Ooh, so two, if we look, nobody, nobody gets one of the twos. twos. It never happens. Quite unusual. Snake eyes. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm rolling. I've rolled a nine. Ooh. So what is, what is this wood? Yep. Yes. So wood is there. So wood for Abby yeah. or 
for Kelly and for Ron. Fish for nobody. Fish for nobody. Oh, <laughs> that's sad. Um, I'm going to see if I can build anything. Let's have a look at my hand and compare it against the building board down here. And yeah, I've, yeah it's been often said I have a pretty thick hand. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a thick hand with no wood, which, may, which is making things very difficult. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Abby. Okay. Um, well, seeing as you're passing it over to me, I am going to say a quick hello to the Ooh. Twitch chat. Uh, LXKHN123 says, these card holders are awesome. They're cool, aren't they? <laughs> Good job. Thank They're you. Thank nice. you. Mo- almost all the standalone Catans are now starting to come with card holders. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and if you have just joined us, uh, hello, hi. Uh, we are Asma Day Live. I'm Abby. That's I'm, Davo. I'm Davo. Hi. And I'm we're here, here with the lovely folks from Catan Studio. Um, and we're playing Catan Rise of the Incas, which lets you trade llamas for potatoes or alpacas. You've just got to trade, you've got to build, you've got to settle. All that Catan goodness. Yeah, we've been we've been getting stuck in. Actually, I got lost in it. Yeah. It's quite immersive. Um, it's like regular Catan, but there's a little bit more going on. But it's not actually that complex. Uh, we've got a few extra resources, um, and then we've just got just got a little board here about different different ages and all this kind of stuff that's going on. Mm-hmm. And my favourite bit that I don't know if you have noticed, but moulded cities, moulded roads, and moulded settlements. It, it's it's awesome. It's really really cool. Uh, if you're into painting. That's that's a, that's a lot of work you could you could put into that. <laughs> uh, and my personal favourite part of this game is uh, this <laughs> lovely llama here. Oh, did you name him? <laughs> well, Twitch chat. The, my favourite suggestions from Twitch chat are uh, llama stay or mm-hmm. llama. Uh, <laughs> does that really crack me up? <laughs> uh, but it's not. It's, sadly, it's not really down to me. It's Aww. down to Catan. You, he belongs to Catan, so. Aww. Uh, well, We'll come back to that, but keep sending in your suggestions for names for the alpaca. The llama, I'm sorry, you said he was an alpaca? alpaca. Yeah, this one's an alpaca. Um, and Velvet Otter says, yeah, the alpaca's looking at my cards. <laughs> no cheating, Lamar. <laughs> I don't think he can see a lot. He's so fairy. His eyes are so furred up. It's true, yeah. Oh. Right, so it is my turn. Okay. So I get to roll. Oh, I'm going to pass these dice. over to you. Thank you. Albert the Alpaca. That's oh, a quite a good name. There's one here for you, Davo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hobbitide would like uh, us to call him Cusco. Cusco. From, from your the favorite Emperor's Disney, New Groove. Your favorite oh, it's the, it's Disney the movie. Best Disney movie. I've watch movies. I've, I've seen The Emperor's New Groove. The Emperor's New Groove and Hercules. That's about it. Excellent films. Ha- they're just underrated. Yeah. So I, I rolled an eight. So I get some more or More or uh, what else do we get? Who gets some bricks? Oh, I get a brick. Nothing for over here. Oh. Abby, why would you do that? <laughs> um, does anyone have any potatoes? Um, no. No, we've been on, lacking in potatoes a little bit. I have a potato. What would yeah. you like for my potato? Um, I could give you a, uh, what's, what's this one here again? What have I got? It's, um, cocoa. I can give yeah, you. I'll do that. Yeah? There you you go. got another potato? Yeah. Thanks. Do you want another potato for a cocoa? I don't have another potato. Oh. Can I, and I can't trade just one cocoa for a good? No. no. So I, I need... I trade you this cocoa for... I don't know. What do you offer? So if I have two cocoa, I can create... Turn that into a good with the bank, yeah. All right, so maybe uh, I could give you a wood or a brick. Sure, a wood's perfect. A wood. Oh, lovely trading with you, Ron. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to turn my uh, my two cocoa into a potato, because that's how growing vegetables works. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that means that I have one, two, three, or... And I've got one two potatoes and that means does it not that I get to build a city oh oh, but have I, oh you so built this, this city out of potatoes <laughs> I built this city on potatoes oh no I've popped, knocked my road over with excitement amazing so that now means oh yep yeah, that goes away now and sorry now you add one more uh, civilization point to your tribe Mm-mm-mm. yeah I'm gonna win <laughs> And what happens with these civilization points? So as soon as the each tribe fills up with four, her first tribe will go into decline, mm-hmm. and you'll found a new civilization with your second tribe. 
Uh, so one more build for Abby, and then her first drives go into decline. Yeah. She'll put the vines on top of all her bits, like so, take all the roads off. Yeah. You still get production from the vine-covered locations, but anyone else can build over top of them. Oh, okay, okay. And now you that... Can also build over your, you can also build over your own vine settlement. So you can, oh. you can get back to it. You can plan it. Climb it back. And while I have a, a city on the board, I get two resources every time that is rolled. Is that correct? Oh, nice. Fabulous. Well, I'm feeling good. Yeah. I'll pass so it over to we Kelly. We do have a fantastic uh, suggestion for the alpaca's name. And it's a reference to a game we played earlier uh, where Abby got very confused. It's, we've had Al Picasso. Oh, um, you guys. <laughs> You guys, that's pretty good. I like we're, that we're, one. We were playing just one, and we, oh, it's such a, such good, a game. good game. And we were trying to describe Van Gogh, uh, and Ab, well, no, we were trying to describe Picasso, and Abby put down Ia, mm. and got very confused. I got my artists mixed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Al Picasso is a great name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Kelly, I think you're up. You rolled a ten. Okay, so ten. Kelly. Ooh, uh, beautiful feathers. I get a potato. Okay. And Abby gets a Yama. Oh, I do. I didn't even see that. Yes. Um, one thing you might not have said is that the, unlike a regular Catan board, there are more than two of each number. Some of these have actually three instead of uh, two. So Correct. there are three tens rather than two tens. But there are still just one two and one twelve. Oh, why is that? More hexes. Yeah, more just a bigger yeah. board. More hexes equals more numbers. Oh, that well, makes sense. I'd rather have two fours or two threes than two twelves. Right, so. for sure. Checks out. <laughs> yeah. So when you're, th when you're coming up with these new Catan games, um, how do you focus on a theme? How did you get to Incas? Um, well, Incas was started Klaus went to a museum exhibition about early Inca culture and was just blown away by how advanced it was for its time. Just the, the structures they built with the technology they had was just amazing to him. The art was, was really incredible, so he was just utterly charmed by it. And, you know, he likes to try to tell stories about things that he loves uh, using this mechanism. So as a, a designer, it becomes like, an interesting challenge in a way. It's like, okay, how can I try to recreate a period of time or a period of history? How can I tell a story with this mechanism? Uh, and that was the trick. You know, he sort of, what resources would they have had? What would have been port important? You can't just go to the normal, get 10 points. How do you describe this long span of time? And out of that came the tribal mechanism and the rise and fall collapse because, you know, to what became ultimately the huge Incan Empire was a series of a lot of earlier tribes and earlier civilizations, a lot of trading, a lot of warring uh, till they formed this huge nation. Awesome. So something that we have been asking as well is when Catan, Rise of the Incas was being made, was there anything that was left on the cutting room floor or did you guys have any ideas that maybe didn't make it to the final game? Um, nothing huge that I can remember. I wasn't here. There, there was, do you have, do you remember any? I wasn't here. You wasn't there, that's right, it's true. There were some economy tweaks, like changing the, what the trade ratios are, what, how much goes into each era, um, where can you build, uh, the valuing of the, uh, long road and large uh, army cards was went through a lot of iterations until we came on something that was smooth so yeah oh awesome now this is part of the Catan histories range um, so we've had a couple of other ones in here I specifically remember Catan Egypt so a couple years ago yeah, Catan Egypt was a, a history scenario. It was a limited edition we did. Um, in the standard line, we have Settlers of America, so that recreates the, the birth of the, the American nation and sort of growth of, of the, the U.S. Uh, before that, we had a, uh, a Rise of Rome uh, one, and 
also Settlers of the Stone Age was actually the first one. That's a game we're likely to approach again, do a complete redo in a couple of years. So we're actively working on that one right now to, to refresh and update. Um, then there was a Merchants of Europe uh, as well. We did a European one. So there's every five or six years we come up with a cool historical story we can tell in a Catan way. Oh, exciting. Well, speaking of histories, next year I've heard you are indeed making some history. Yeah. It's going to be the 25th anniversary of Catan. That's incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, it makes me feel old, but it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so 25 years of Catan next year. We have a lot of different storytelling going on with that. We have some really cool products that uh, I hope will really blow people away. Uh, uh, some global parties, some world travel involves, pop-up events. So stay tuned, uh, Catan.com, and you will see some cool stuff we got going. Catan got Catan got com, <laughs> Catan dot com, and you guys, I heard Kelly that you've just opened Snapchat, amongst other things on your social media. We have, yep. We we just started a Snapchat uh, for coming to Gen Con. Amazing. It's uh, official underscore Catan. Uh huh. Uh, we are on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Settlers of Catan, and we're on Instagram at Settlers of Catan. Ooh, will you will you ever be on TikTok? Someone asked me that earlier, and I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'm with you, Ron. I'm with right. you. Yeah, I had to ask. What I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've talked a lot about the, the history there of Catan. Yeah. What's in the future? What does the future hold? Well, immediate future, we have Starfarers, um, which Yay! you all played yesterday. That, yes. That's been going really well on the show. I mean, we're not selling it yet. It doesn't come out till October, November. Mm -hmm. But uh, the response we've had from people playtesting at the fair has been fantastic. It's like our most demoed game daily. It's It's been great. So we've got that coming. We've got uh, what else we got going on, Kelly? I think we just have so much going on next year that we're yes. really lots of promo and party. In on, yeah. Stay tuned All to events, Essen yeah. and we'll mm -hmm. spill a lot of beans. Ooh, Ooh. Beans everywhere. Uh, well, Will uh, you spill those beans for us, Essen? Yeah, absolutely. Live Amazing. on Asmo Twitch. Yay! Oh my god! I didn't know that. I'm no. so excited. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I'm super excited about Settlers, uh, st Starfarers of Catan. My husband watched the entire show yesterday and it was the one game he said, Can you pick that up for me? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I had to say, wait, you've got to wait, you've got to wait. Um, for you guys at home, you can check out Catan Starfarers um, back on yesterday's stream. But it's, it, it's amazing. So you, it's Catan. There's a little spaceship. You can probably hear the rattling in the background. Mm -hmm. You shake the spaceship. It has tiny little beads in it that come out of the bottom. And that influences the gameplay. And you can buy boosters. You can buy thrusters. You can buy guns that you all, you all stick onto your little ship a little bit like Mr. Potato Head and it's really good it's really really good and it, like I said it's quite something for my husband to have watched the entire day where <laughs> we did so many games and he was like that's the one that's the one I want to play uh, and I just want to give a shout out to Board Game Photo who said Ron did you say that you'll spill a lot of beans oh hey! yay dad joke <laughs> yay dad joke <laughs> right <laughs> Fabulous. Well, whose turn is it? We got lost in conversation. I'm finishing up my turn. I okay. have two feathers, which Ooh. I can trade in for a wood and for another a wood? brick. Uh, well, oh, just, wood and a brick. That's me. I'm just going to throw it in. Just toss it in. Oh, I put it in. Oh, that's and sorry. And I built a road. Okie dokie. So I'm going over here. I know. Sorry, I don't. Oh. All right, so we need a 12. Okay. If you call it, I'm impressed. Oh, no. Oh, I get two wood. Because I got a city. So we've got nine get, there, Kelly? nine and here. Four. And I think um, that's about it for nines. So Osborne has said that uh, Starfarers of Catan is one of the many games they've put on their wish list from watching our, from ah, watching our stream. Yes. I mean, that, their wish list is long now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> their poor wallet. <laughs> so does anybody have... A llama for a rock and ore. Oh, Ooh, let me check. Hang on. Yeah, uh, no, I'll do you that trade. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. You None for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Rude. Ah, <laughs> uh, I thought you might. I thought you might, mm -hmm. you know. 
Uh, Velvet Otter makes a great point. Uh, they're saying they're going to have to go back and watch the video on demand on Twitch from yesterday to check out Starfarers of Catan because yeah. they're really excited to see it. So, yes, you can go back and rewatch the entire show again if you want to. I mean, that's a lot to watch. <laughs> um, Do you have timestamps no? yet? Not no, yet, but not we now, will do. Obviously. We will I mean, have really time No, 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 you can't go now. <laughs> you have to stay. We're playing Catan Rise of the Incas. Um, but yes, once we're, once we're done at 6 p.m. EDT, you can catch up on previous streams. Um, you guys both have a lot of badges on your uh, Gen Ooh. Con badge. Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, what are these? This was a really exciting event that we did here this year, um, handing out resource buttons and little starter packs. I don't know if we have, they're not out here right now. Oh, he is. There's the hey. ore. Do you see him the way back there? <laughs> really cute uh, little resources handing out starter packs of buttons with five of one type of resource, like five ore in a pack. And then you would take those, put them on your lanyard, and then trade them with other people around the show till you, uh, oh, no, until you get a full set of five, the five base katan resources and then you brought them back here to the booth and then you get this extra special robber sheet pin oh that's so cute yes and um they were so popular that we ran out of starter pack buttons so now everyone is just kind of scrambling to trade the resources that they have and find all the other players because they cannot get any more starter packs not from us all, gone. all the resources are in the wild they were so and popular. uh it was this katan experience was just a fun way to interact with players and people and just have an excuse to chat with people at the show worked out really well awesome. well are there any one of the, are there any ones you need because i'm i'm in the market for I some you know kid it out. i've got everything i've just got to go back and get my robber ah well I, I had any spares oh well i'm gonna have to go explore the hall and find more people you know i think abby you've just got a wood over there oh oh, oh. <laughs> I'll hook you up with a pin, though. <gasps> Look at this! Oh, wow. I'm going to get this out for you guys at home. This is lovely. That is amazing. I, do, I, have, a cheeky, I have a cheeky robber sheep uh, that I was given the other day. I am out of pirates. Oh, Look at that's that. okay. I've got Catans or Islands. Oh, can I have the Catan? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right, well, so you guys are nailing we... it right now yeah. with all of the different themes on Catan. We've got Incas, we've got Starfarers in space, we've had Game of Thrones. Are there any other things we can expect? Like what, what else is coming in the world of Catan? Well, we've got some new special edition stuff coming out next year. Uh, more details to follow at Essen. Check out the Twitch spiel then. Um... Another one that I think people overlook from time to time, two-player games. Uh, Catan's really hard to play with two players because you're trading and it's you have one partner to trade with. It's not really exciting. But uh, Rivals for Catan has been super popular for us um, and often overlooked by, by many. It's a, a very interactive two-player card game, uh, lots of card combos that you can build. Um, so for me, when i got only one person to play with, it's my go-to if we're Cataning. Oh, yeah, no, I have Rivals for Catan. And you've recently, you've released it all in one big box because it used to come in, in the base game and you had, it was Age of Enlightenment, Age of Darkness, and now you can get the whole lot. It's really cool. It's, it's a card game. You twist the cards to collect resources. I really rate it. It's a, it's a good one. It's a really good one. And I also learned yesterday that you can play Catan Traveler Edition two-player. Kelly, how's that? Um, it's actually really fun. You have you. Sorry, no. my oh, we're getting mics all over. Whoa! Uh, um, you basically play as the other two players. Yeah. Uh, you put the other colors on the board, and then whenever you build, you build as the other player too, and that keeps the board a little um, fuller. And and then there are special trading cards that allow you to force trades with your opponent. And um, it just makes the game you know, a little more friendly for two players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Catan Traveler Edition, we covered it yesterday. The chat loved so it. So good. So guys at home, if you haven't seen it, it's Catan, but it's tiny. And it's in like a little fold-up, I want to say suitcase. And it has drawers that you can put all the little pieces in. And all of the pieces actually peg into the board. So you can literally flip it upside down. And we did. You literally and they didn't can't fall out. table flip that game in rage. I know. <laughs> and one of the best bits... 
is uh, the board is still segmented. So you still get all of the different combinations. Mm-hmm. Um, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Somebody in the chat says, how, how, they have a suggestion for you guys. They said, Stranger Things Catan with the upside down. Ooh, now that's a thought. That's a thought. So, you guys, you also have Star Trek Catan. How is that? Star Trek Catan's, I, I really enjoy it. It's At its core, it's a basic reskin of the base game. So it's like your normal red box three four player katan but it does have one twist with the hel- it's we sell it also as helpers of katan as a little expansion but it's crew in star trek so you get individual you know kirk uhura sulu etc um that each give you a special way to break the normal rules of katan so you get you always have one crew member that's your power. Um, if you use their ability, you have the chance to switch them for a new crew, or you can keep them to use a second time. Once you use them the second time, then you're forced to get a new crew member. And they do things like uh, Sulu, he can redirect uh, your ship. So let's pretend on this board, if we're flying, it would be a road redirection. So you can take your road off the board and put it somewhere else legal. It's very useful if, you know, you have two players charging for the single point, one settles before the other. If you get Sulu, you can undo that road to nowhere and put it somewhere useful. Uh, So it's got a lot of uh, cool little tricks like that. Now, we've talked a lot about the physical world of Catan. And by by physical, I mean the actual board games that you can pick up, you can touch, um, you can put Mm. on a shelf. But Catan is also in the digital space a lot more than any other board games. And I've heard you've just released a version on Nintendo Switch. Yep, just came out in July. Yeah. It's been going really well. It's a very fun, interactive with the machine. You have AI to play with. A lot of people have asked, uh, why can't it do pass and play? At the core of it, trades. If you're trading yeah. cards, it's like, hi, would you like to take this trade? And you're constantly handing back forth your Twitch device. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, if you have someone there to pass and play, just break out an analog game and play. <laughs> so, yeah. For sure. And loads of people at home will be watching on PCs and mobiles. So it's not just on Switch. It quite literally is on mobiles as well. Mm-hmm. So what else is there if people want to play it digitally? It's on VR. Catan Universe on Steam and Android and iOS. Yeah. Yep. Catan VR was one of my favorite things that we did at Gen Con last year. Yeah. Mostly because Devo just lost <laughs> all reality. Yep. So he was in the headset and he was supposed to be trading. And then he was just like slowly getting more and more and more forward towards the table until <laughs> he just hit the ground. <laughs> and how did it look? No, it was awesome. I was getting closer and closer because the board is actually animated in 3D. So you can, you can get right in and see all the little details. <laughs> um, it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Yeah. And I'm really excited for Catan Rise of Incas. I've had a blast with the llamas. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's Catan with a twist. Yeah. Um, as I said, you guys are na- nailing it. You've got Catan, Rise of Incas. You've got Catan Starfarers, which you guys can check out a little bit earlier on the video. But thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I do have one last question Ooh, for you on. before we leave. Did Twitch come up with any names that you would be happy to give to this wonderful Catan Ooh. alpaca here? Ooh. Can you I've, make that commitment? I, I've heard several, but we'll take them under advisement. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll look at the chat later. Okay, amazing. Watch this space. Watch, Watch this, this space. space. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. Lamaste is pretty cool. Lamaste was mm. great, yeah. I'm still <laughs> shooting for Lamar, though. That was amazing. <laughs> Lamar, Lamar. Lamar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Goodbye, my nameless friend. Goodbye. You are wonderful. Oh, and goodbye, my goodbye. named friends. Yeah. Bye, Ron. Goodbye, Kelly. Goodbye, Ron. Bye, Kelly. <laughs> thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you.